Punca pendapatan terjejas akibat kerja penampakan laut. Itu dakwaan sekumpulan nelayan pantai di Tanjung Tokong Pepinang berhubung kegiatan itu bagi projek pembangunan yang merentasi kawasan tangkap ikan. Dan ni dulu ayak jerenih sampai ke sini. Ya, sekarang ayak dah keroh. Akan pulau ni akan buat mungkin akan tercemar lagi laut. Ketam memang tak ada hilang lah. Habis sekarang dia mau buat projek nombor dua. Dia mesti kaitan sama kita orang. Kita orang tak boleh cari makanan, kita kena pergi jauh. Mereka berharap akan ada penyelesaian yang lebih berkesan kerana kerja penambakan boleh merosakkan habitat semula jadi hidupan laut. Tak perlu labuh buka, kena labuh luar boy. Boy ni sampai ke ni 6 ski. Lebih kurang 800 ekar. Oh, kawasan, boleh. kawasan ikan yang tak boleh memak, ma, mengukat. Paling boleh pakai ni kapal ni. Kapal buat selut. Eh, buat selut. Buat selut. Buat selut. Habislah nelayan tak boleh cari makan lagi. Lah. Hapus tempat kawasan. Saya Muhammad Ishaq bin Abdul Rahman. Jawatan saya adalah sebagai Ketua Komuniti Nelayan Pengkalan Tain Tokong dan merangkap Ahli Lembaga Pengarah Satuan Nelayan Kawasan Telubang. Ketua ni bukan senang nak jadi ketua lah. Kena maki dengan orang. Kerja kena lari sana, lari sini, pergi buat tu, buat ni. Setiap projek ni, pendapatan dan laut dah kita dah kurang. Pendapatan pun teruk, terpaksa kena pula. Tenakkan kami, baru kita ada hasil. Tak ada choice lah. Kita kena buat lah, terpaksa. Kita cari makan itu tempat yang ada ketam pun. Sudah saya tangkap ikan lah. Di sini sudah 50 tahun. Ini depan saja. Banyak ikan. Banyak beza. Ikan pun tak ada, susah. Sekarang orang nelayan semua mengeluh. Propose Reclamation of Sri Tanjung Pinang, Phase 2, Development STP2 Pinang. Detail Environmental Impact Assessment. Nelayan mana boleh faham ni? Nelayan tak pelajaran. Tapi kalau orang baca, kita boleh dengar lah. Laporan alam sekitar ni kami pun tak dapat. Dan kami pun tak faham apa yang sebut dalam alam sekitar tu. Jadi kalau ada orang baca, kami boleh faham lah. Kami boleh dengar lah. Lokasi penangkapan ikan, para nelayan di Tain Tokong dan Pantai Paramon sering menggunakan kawasan luar pantai ini sebagai lokasi penangkapan ikan mereka. Kebanyakan lokasi penangkapan ikan ini terletak di dalam kawasan cadangan penambakan. Oleh itu, para nelayan dilarang untuk menggunakan lokasi ini pada masa akan datang. Basically, we can find them in primary and secondary forests. From lowland to hill dikterokat forests, we can find them. Most commonly known are the Pinang Hills, Pinang National Park, and also the um, Botanical Gardens. If you talk about island, if you talk about mainland, there are also a few places that you can find. For example, close to the mangrove area, the rainforest over there, you can find langurs as well. But they are very quiet and they are also very secretive. So these are the main reason that they are still hidden in the rainforest uh, without people knowing. Muda, muda, can think. Muda, muda, can come muda. Both ladies, they play an essential role in uh, seed dispersal as well because they feed on uh, figs, they feed on uh, fruits, and all those have seeds inside. And sometimes they do consume the seed, and once the droppings come out, the droppings carry the seed. Therefore, they are very important in the ecosystem. Hmm. There is a lack of engagement with the community in Penang as well as a lack of environmental awareness on issues on Penang Island, especially with regards to sometimes the over-enthusiasm for development.
One of our concerns actually would be even in this particular area of study in Telok Bahang on the Langers would be the implementation of the highway which is supposed to connect Tanjung Bunga to Telok Bahang may in fact run along the hill landscape and thereby fragmenting the environments or the Lango territories between the shore and the hill. During the process, the sound pollution and the cutting down of trees happening at the site, then lack of food and also the langers, they will definitely alter their routes. So this will create an um, unhealthy generation of langers or other species of animal, which will go down to, yeah, the vulnerability of the species will be increasing. Di hadapan ini, pantai ini selalu ada lumba-lumba lah, melintas. Tambak laut ni, dia orang buat kerja, barangkali lumba-lumba ni kena propeller ke apa-apa. Dan saya minta pihak perikanan tolong ambil perhatian dan punca-punca apa yang sebab dengan dia mati. Assalamualaikum tuan. Waalaikumsalam tuan. Ya tuan. Saya Muhammad Ishak bin Abdul Rahman. Okay. Saya ketua komuniti nelayan pengkalan Tain Tokong. Lapor kat tuan ni kata bangkai lumba-lumba. Bangkai lumba-lumba? Ya, kat pandai, ah, pantai ya. Tain Tokong. Macam ni tuan, saya sekarang ni ada kat Tengah Nu. Oh, ada Tengah Nu. Ha. Nah, saya ada Tengah Nu. Lepas ya. tu nanti tuan boleh tolong call nombor ni tak? Tuan bagi telefon dia suruh dia call saya boleh? Ah, Okey, baik. Ah, Okey, nanti. Selamat tuan. Assalamualaikum. The first thing came into my mind was uh, definitely feel a bit devastating because I had my assistant with me, we nearly tear out. Uh, road definitely will cause some inconveniency for the wildlife and before that we already encountered a few road kill. So you can actually see there's a huge wound on the head. So it's definitely fell down from the cable wire when he was uh, moving from the forested area to the coastal line. He couldn't balance himself on the cable wire. He fell down and directly hit the road and eventually uh, he passed away. understand about the impact of the road towards the movement of the wildlife. Therefore, it's like the urge is in me that I wanted to voice out and I wanted to let people know about the impact of the road construction, not only to the human but also to the wildlife residents as well. And I can tell you that there are more than 40 troops of the skinny monkeys actually ranging from the Nantamuna area and up to the end of the Telokamha, which is within the range of the peril. And for us, we've been studying the wildlife for so many months and we can see that there are many lives in there that we should appreciate as well. How many of you actually look inside what kind of animals you can see and the water catchment, how beautiful to sustain the life in the forest. This is something that we should raise. Without trees, without animals, we are basically nothing. That's all, thank you. We have noted down all your concerns. We will have a second forum where we will address your, your, your queries. And then uh, we hope that you can bring more feedback to us so that we can address the issue accordingly. I wanted people to know that you're not living just with your own kind. You're living with different kinds that you can't see them. Like Malay saying, Tatao maka tasayangkan. If you trigger a conversation, people talk about it, then there's a hope. If you never talk about this, there'll never be hope. Sebagai suhu kreasyen di baru, Kita perlu menghormati semua konsep yang telah ditandatangani oleh kerajaan yang lepas. Khususnya tidak sedar tentang kesan 
Selamatkan laut yang memberi, memberikan impak kepada hari raya. Dan tentulah kalau kita sebut tentang uh, tambahkan laut, ini semua telah digariskan pada 2007. Apabila struktur plan negeri telah digariskan dan diwakilkan oleh kerajaan dulu. So, kita hanya laksanakan kerana terikat dengan undang-undang apa yang dilakukan sebelum ini. Maka kita hanya boleh berbincang untuk memperbaiki tawaran yang telah diberikan sebelum ini. Dan juga untuk para nelayan, seorang pemerintah boleh dapat pembahasan yang lebih lagi. Sekali lagi, saya nak ucapkan terima kasih kepada semua yang hadir dan juga untuk uh, rakan-rakan bahagian ke atas CNO atas inisiatif dan persetujuan mereka untuk memberikan uh, perbaikan yang lebih kepada para nelayan awak-awak. Sekian, terima kasih. RM15,000 itu bagi racun. Kami tak mau, Kami terjejas pencahayaan kami. 60% dah kurang pada suram masa dekat 7-8 bulan. Sekarang selut semua kawasan. Kata mereka selut macam-macam. Tiga tiga puluh tempat kita akan buka ke Boy Kuning. Dan tujuan kita adalah kita mendapatkan perhatian daripada pihak kerajaan dan juga pemaju supaya menimbang pula pertama sekali adalah daripada bentuk pampasan dan juga kemudahan yang keduanya adalah daripada segi aspek keselamatan dan ketiganya adalah daripada segi aspek environment. Dah lepas daripada kita buat bantahan, tunjuk perasaan pada 14 Januari 2017. Sekarang baru ada nampak ada surat menyurat lah. Berjalan lah. Nelayan kena bersatu, negakkan hak. Nelayan akan akan buat lagi sekali bantahan lah. Dia kalau-kalau tak boleh selesai masalah nelayan. So after the forum, the YPD assistant actually contacted us and uh, so we had a meeting together with the EIA Environmental Impact Assessment Team and also with the um, stakeholder. So we voiced out our concern and then after that, their media will actually pay attention on our small research group. Yeah, so we managed to get some awareness writing and hoping to get people attention towards uh, wildlife conservation and also forest conservation as well. It's a very good opportunity to be involved in the whole process. So I was lucky because I prepared a squad behind me, all the uh, experts. With a team of people, we can actually trigger a different. I think that at least it's a good progress. Um, we gain some understanding from their view and what they're doing and what they can contribute. And so we just see how it goes, lah. do our part and then schedule for the next meetup and then hopefully we can have uh, more individuals working together lah, instead of just like us, you and you and you. Now it's like pulling in more people from different backgrounds together. So I think it's very good. The developer side actually accepted our proposal to come up with a counter proposal to the EIA company. And right now we just pray that our counter proposal uh, will be able to provide more information to the public because public has the rights to know what are the impacts. All of us can influence people around. And enforcement and education go hand in hand. We'll achieve great things. In a village between the hills and the sea, he grew up between the hills and the sea. His earliest music, the susurration of the waves, the antiphony of miners in the coconut trees. His childhood obsessions, hiking and fishing and swimming, Sprinting across the cinnamon sand, digging for cockles, exploring the bush with catapult in hand. All this and more fed on 
the myriad mysteries of hill and sea. Yet in later years, much as they shaped the man, he could not speak the untamed majesty of that sea or the humped silence of those hills. Caught now between the mountain of despair and the lagoon of tears of his discarded village people, how could he speak of the hills or the sea?